you're welcome to the Economy and Politics Show. I'm Oto Abasi Abasekon. On this special edition, we look at Oshun State, where the gubernatorial election is holding, and of course, the Oshun people are going to decide who will be their governor. The two major contestants, incumbent governor Rauf Aregbeshola of All Progressive Congress and Senator Yola Omisore of People's Democratic Party. To discuss with me the predictions, analysis, and what to expect from this election is architect Kola Ogunleye, a regular guest, a political analyst. It's great to have you, sir. Thank you very much. Awesome. Huge, huge expectations, sorry, and a lot, a lot of hype about this election. Expectations are there. And build up to this election, you saw a mega rally by APC on Tuesday, and also there was a massive campaign rally also by the People's Democratic Party last Saturday. Now let's look at the build up on the campaigns. How do you assess them? Well, we will be looking at the elections in Oshun State um, that is taking place today. We'll be looking at it from the point of view, against the background, let me put it that way, of what happened in Ekiti State mm -hmm. recently. That has actually changed the whole scenario for both parties. For the People's Democratic Party, it was an emboldening uh, opportunity that happened in Ekiti. They were both, their, their moray and that of their supporters were bolstered that they could defeat APC after all in the Southwest. Uh, we have a situation in which hitherto political analysts and pundits in the country have always given it to the APC as being in control mm. of the southwestern part of the country. And that also explains why a lot of their uh, later day alliances and partnerships with other parties uh, took place. It was practically based on the fact that when it comes to the Southwest, APC is in charge. So if we align with them, we'll be able to. But all that was beginning to you know, unravel in a manner that was not expected by the APC. So that is the situation we had you know, uh, prior to uh, a few weeks ago. But as soon as the election took place and Fayoshi won that election in the Kitty State, in what people have described as landslide, some people said this is the most unexpected result of an election and all of that. What it changed is that the political dynamics in the Southwest changed mm. you know, significantly. Yeah. And it is again that change that happened and the morale of PDP that was you know, boasted and the fact that they now had more confidence that they can win, especially against the, back, against the perception that indeed Fayemi performed, mm. but Fayoshi won the election. So people began to wonder what actually happened in that election. And PDP was, saying to, uh, was you know, also congratulating itself to say that, look, if we can take Fayemi's equity state from APC, why not try Arabe Shola's or Show State? Especially when you also look at some of the policies of Arabe Shola in you know, Show State, uh, you, you will agree with me that it made the state a little bit a state that can be contested. So for in a manner that um, will give APC a run for his money. So those are, that's the preliminary uh, remark I want to make at this stage. That brings me to uh, my next question quickly. We looked at the ideology, okay, the propositions of the both candidates, mm -hmm. and both are saying that they are people-oriented. So from your analysis, between Governor Rebeshola and, of course, Senator Iola Omisore, he has been a senator, he has been a former deputy governor in Oshun State, Let's look at their people-oriented strategy. Yeah, let me say straight away that when you talk about an ideologue uh, in the southwestern part of the country, no doubt, um, uh, Governor Arigbe Shola has um, singled out himself as an ideologue uh, of sorts. Uh, but whether he has been able to push that ideological orientation within the political milieu in which he has found himself is another matter. It is often said in some circles that, indeed, he is the ideologue of APC and in some of the speeches and some of the, uh, the uh, explanations and everything that Governor Arigbe Shola has made uh, in the last uh, couple of years, he is he, seen as a leftist mm -hmm. par excellence. But whether that is what is playing out in Osho State today is another matter. Ideologically, so I will, I, will push, I will push him in the left of the center. Then, of course, Senator Yola Omishore has not hidden himself uh, from uh, the characterization of being a conservative. Uh, of course, he started also as a member of the AD when he was the deputy governor. 
in that same state, Osho State, and then he later on became a senator. And um, if you look at the situation in Osho State today, I will not analyze it based on ideological orientation. Mm -hmm. I would rather analyze it based on the perception of the people of who can make things happen. Ariba Shola has done very well in the area of physical infrastructure in the state. So many roads have been constructed, mm -hmm. um, uh, so many uh, bridges have been built. Uh, most, uh, some, uh, most areas of the state that have either to been uh, abandoned in terms of development have taken place there. But what people continue to ask questions about is that these physical infrastructural development policies of the APC state, are they linking it to economic development for the people? the socioeconomic development of the people, is it being incorporated into some of these policies? If we are constructing roads and you are giving it to foreigners, how does it become employment generating for the state? How do the people of the state participate in that process? So you have a situation in which they are carrying out programs, laudable infrastructural program, but there is a missing link between what they are doing and the economic and social development of the people themselves. And so you have a situation where a lot of money is being spent in terms of expenditure, capital expenditure, but the ordinary man on the street is not feeling it. There is still a lot of hunger, there is still a lot of poverty, there is still a lot of want in those states. Fauci won the election in the state, quote and unquote, based on his own perception of people's needs being about what food on the table, money in their pockets. These are the simple, strip, stripped of all the complexities around why and how Fire Ocean won the election in the Kitty State. It boiled down to only one thing Is there food on my table? Is there money in my pocket to spend? These are basic, simple needs of people in a very dire situation poverty stricken, ignorant, and all of that. They are easily, uh, they are easily um, attracted by people who are populists in their orientation. Uh, you know, whether that is going to be a reality when they come into power or not, that's another matter. But they have seen these other people who are doing physical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But that is not being translated into economic development for their people. So what exactly are we talking about here? In Oshu State today, what will be in contention is the heart of the people. Who is able to win the heart of the people more with his policies? Yes, Arek Beshola has been there. If you, if you like, you can say that Omishore too has been there before. But what he's saying is that with the policies Arek Beshola has put in place, what has happened to your socioeconomic status? Those are the questions. And don't let us forget the controversial policies of Governor Arek Beshola in Osho State. Like what he talking? might be, he might, he, he might just be punished for some of these policies in terms of lost votes. I'm talking of his policy with regard to education, okay. um, you know, unification of education, okay. and all of that. Um, we're also looking at his or his religious orientation, uh, where how people perceive that religious orientation, and how is that he been able to do? He wants to do things differently. He wants to introduce policies that are very, very unique. But one thing we must always take into consideration is that you must carry the people along. And you must not be seen to be imposing policies. Let policies derive from the aspirations and wishes of the people. Now, another key thing for this election is the process. Security and, of course, the electionary process. And we've seen, again, troops, soldiers, the armada of troops in Oshun State for this election. Policemen and, of course, yes. the uh, state yeah, security I, service. Yes. Um, Isn't I, that going to really create... Also, like let me quickly cut you, uh, yeah, cut in here. Yeah. Uh, let me say that when you have a set of situations in a particular domain, you have to apply... Your, your response must depend on the situation. That's just what I see. And I see the situation in Osho State as being because of all that have happened in Osho State in recent past, the movement from one political party to another and all of that. People, there is a perception that there is a serious threat to security. Mm. And unusual circumstances 
you know, require extraordinary solutions. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you have to, you know, be mindful of the fact that there is no end to how security tight the situation in a place can be. It depends on those who are looking at the situation on the ground. And they want to make sure that they don't, they, no stone is left unturned in terms of security. We cannot complain that there is too much security. Especially when you remember what President Jonathan said during, during the campaign in Oshogbu, mm -hmm. that 10, uh, 10 graduates, you coppers, were killed in the past election. Mm -hmm. that, is just too, that is just symbolic. If you look at the number of people we lose to elections in this country, you will agree with me that there is no limit to the uh, uh, level that at which you can take security to. Once that security arrangement does not prevent you from going to cast your vote, you go to the voting booth, you cast your vote, and you go back to your house. We have been, you, all the elections conducted by military in this country that usher in civilian administration were manned by military men. Thank you very much. And now, finally, are you confident that INEC is uh, ready to conduct this election? And who are you predicting to as win? As far election? as elections, isolated elections like this are concerned, INEC has been trying. My fear for INEC is when they want to conduct a general election throughout the country, will they be able to put the same level of efficiency, the same level of effectiveness, the same level of concentration? But right now when you hold an election in a state like Osho, on one, one day election and the preparation is at this level and all of that, we are saying that can that happen in 36 states of the federation during the general election, for example? As far as this level of election is concerned, they've been trying. You know, they, they didn't get it quite right in Anambra, but they got it right in Ikiti, especially with the level of security that applied on that day. And everybody adjourned the election to be free and fair, almost freer and fairer than that of uh, the June 12th that is uh, normally adjourned to be the fairest and the fairest election in this country. And of course, in Osho now, we see a lot of preparation to that effect. You know, yesterday there was no uh, banking business beyond the hours of 12 midday or so. Everybody is in his house, they are preparing for that election. If that is the price we have to pay to have a free and fair election, I don't have a problem with that. Talking about predictions about this election, it's too close to call. That's the way I'll put it. It's a 50-50 game. Omishori has campaigned vigorously. He's coming against the background of the fact that he comes from Ileife, the cradle Ileife, of Yoruba land. And the other guy comes from Ijesha land. You know, so from Elisha, the heart of Ijesha land. So you find both of them are coming from areas that are Very highly sensitive. populated. They are going to go into that election to ensure that they are able to win the, election, the, the, the voters from those areas from where they did not come from. So that is the way the election is going to be. But when you talk about who is going to win the election today, I think we'll have to wait on, until after the uh, counting has uh, stopped. Thank you very much, Akita Kola Ogunle. And as we have heard, it's going to be a closely contested election in Oshun State. And three things we expect. We hope that the security will be effective to ensure that people are not hurt or there's no violence. We also expect that the Independent National Electoral Commission will conduct a free and fair election. And at the end, finally, we would have a candidate coming out who is the wish of the entire people of Oshun State. Thank you for watching this edition of Economy and Politics Show. You can always join us on our social media handles, Twitter and Facebook for further discussions and engagements. Also, log on to our website, www.webtvng.com. Until our next edition, thank you and do have a great day.